mandatory reporting of such crime that should be child friendly that should be child friendly why that should be child friendly one nation one election and the same question was asked by upsc yes or no gs paper 2 pucha hua hai one nation one aise hi aayenge question okay so take these classes seriously why i am going through very much research because these are the important topics from where they are asking questions okay so write down whatever you are understanding or whatever you are capabilities just write down okay and send me the answer uh, i will give the feedback and work on those feedback and again write the answer okay because answer writing is not a one go phenomena okay it will take time to develop some <clears throat> important skills yes or no because structuring is the important part of answer writing content should be there how to concise your answer within the word limit okay many factors play important role okay so try to write the answers only two students send me the answers out of these many and many of the online students do logo ne bheja hai kyun baki logo ko time nahi mila I have shared my email. Yes, I shared. I am sharing it again. Dot. Okay. ऐसे में चेक कैसे होगी इमेजेस चेक कहां से हो पाएगी है ना पीडीएफ बना के भेजिए सिर्फ दो लोगों ने भेजा है लुक इफ यू आर स्टार्टिंग योर आंसर राइटिंग देन फ्यू टिप्स फर्स्ट थिंग दैट रीड दैट पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन ट्वाइस बिफोर अटेम्प्टिंग एनी ऑफ द क्वेश्चन ठीक है now the second thing if that particular question is having two parts or three part then you have to answer each okay you have to address each part okay third thing introduction introduction should not be more than of 3 to 4 lines so first 3 to 4 line will be your introduction then you will be addressing first part of your answer by making such he headings bracketed headings then first point second point third point fourth point or maximum five point then you have second part or second heading then first second third fourth and fifth okay if question is uh asking that critically analyze or uh, find out some challenges then you have to mention some solutions also or way forward also if you are highlighting certain challenges certain issues then write down solution or way forward at least 3 to 4 solution okay and last conclusion 3 to 4 lines okay three to four lines conclusion that's it okay you don't have to write long paragraph write your answer in this in this format okay one or two line maximum each point should have at least one or two line and if uh, you can write examples 
to substantiate your point then write down that example also okay but long paragraphs should be avoided be it upsc or any other state psc long paragraph should not be written your structure should be like this three to four line introduction then first heading four to five points four points are enough if they are asking uh, that particular question as a 10 marker then four points are enough if they are asking it as a 15 marker then five point five points should be written then second part five point four points then solution way forward something like this and conclusion if any of the question is coming in geography or internal security or international relation and uh, if you can draw the map of india yes map of india or map of the world then you should also draw that map in like this is your page these are the those borders okay so your map should be like this only yahan pe map banana hai aapko itni si jagah mein so try to practice drawing micro maps like this okay yes or no so try to write the answers okay at least two to three answers should be written every day okay chahe jitna bhi aata ho jitna bhi knowledge ho likho to sahi abhi abhi to start hi nahi kiya hai aapne answer writings ke level hote hain theek hai aap abhi sabse bottom wale level pe ho english sir yes okay so you are at the bottom level right now okay you have to practice this particular thing then you will reach at the topmost level okay you got the idea so our first news is on child sexual abuse last week supreme court said that viewing storing child sexual exploitative and abusive material is an offense okay not sharing or shooting okay just viewing that particular thing will be considered as an offense why we will be analyzing this particular thing supreme court on monday september 23 held that viewing in private downloading storing possessing distributing or displaying pornographic act involving children attract criminal liability under protection of children from sexual offence act pokso and the information technology act okay second thing bench says that sexual act was only the beginning of the child's victimization urges parliament to amend pokso act to substitute the term child pornography with the child sexual exploitative and abuse material it is a comprehensive term so this particular word child pornography should be replaced via this particular word that is child sexual exploitative and abusive material c seem okay supreme court ruled that the viewing or processing child sexual exploitative material is illegal urging the government to promote sex education and redefine related laws okay so we will analyze two thing first thing is the sex education okay and second thing is the implication of having child pornography okay like this was also in in the news that want to tolerate odisha announced a task force to probe child sexual abuse material so you can also write that state governments are also taking actions okay to prevent child sexual abuse and uh, distribution of child sexual material okay child sexual exploitation is one of the most heinous crimes imaginable 
एंड ऑफेंस ऑफ चाइल्ड पोर्नोग्राफी इज इक्वली एज हीनियस इफ नॉट मोर एज इन दर ऑफ द विक्टिमाइजेशन एंड एक्सप्लोइेशन ऑफ चाइल्ड डज नॉट एंड विद द इनिशियल एक्ट ऑफ अब्यूज ओके दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग इज नॉट एंड विद द एंड ऑफ द अब्यूज बट it is merely the beginning point okay because that particular thing will remain in the mind of that particular child for his entire life yes it uh, it in the essence turn the singular incident of the abuse into the ripple of trauma including acts where the rights and dignity of the child is continuously violated each time such material is viewed or shared yes that is why they are saying that viewing or storing any content related to child pornography is an offense because every time you are watching such material then every time you are victimizing that particular child his dignity will be compromised every time okay this statement is said by supreme court okay they rejected the argument that the viewing or possession of such material might not meet the legal threshold of criminal conduct they rejected that particular notion that just having that material or viewing that particular material in private will not amounts to the criminal act they rejected that particular thing they are saying that if you are having something like this in your tablet or in your phone or in your computer then it will be considered as the criminal offense okay so earlier stand okay that was taken by the government or in fact those councils who were against this particular notion yes or no their notion was rejected by supreme court okay this one that child sexual abuse in india alarming statistics lifelong impact how to heal main data batata hu aapko abhi ncrb data shows rise in child sexual abuse conference held to discuss this particular issue kitna hai dekhna abhi the term child sexual exploitative and abuse material or cc more accurately reflect the reality of these images videos are not merely pornographic but they are the record of the incidents where the child has either been sexually exploited or abused or where any abuse of the children has been portrayed through any self generated visual depiction held the court placing the emphasis on the criminal nature of the creating distributing and consuming such content the ruling authored by the justice parvati wala directed all the courts to refrain from using the term child pornography rather they are saying that you should use cc that is child sexual exploitative and abuse material in judicial order and judgment mandating the adoption of cc to prevent the inadvertent trivialization of the of these crime by rejecting the term child pornography and emphasis the legality of the viewing and possessing such material the highest court of the land had sent a strong message that society must no longer trivialize or miss characterize these heinous act the supreme court ruling is a transformative step in very defining how child sexual exploitation uh, exploitation crime are viewed and addressed in india basically they are changing the view yes or no they are changing the view it is the transformative stage earlier uh, the proponent of those uh, basically those viewer or those councils who were defending who were de defending a right to watch pornography or a right to watch porn they are considering that particular thing as a fundamental right yes and that is why they are defending this particular thing as well yes but supreme court said that no merely merely an act of viewing or having that particular content in your phone will also be considered as an offense okay so this is a transformative step because of <clears throat> heinous nature which is involved in such crime simultaneously the court recommendation urge a comprehensive multifaceted approach involving the legislative changes 
education awareness and the support system to protect the children from exploitation and abuse delving into the profound impact of ccm on the victim the court highlighted these crimes extend beyond the physical abuse to the psychological emotional and social consequences child exploitative material is deeply degrading to the dignity of the children reduces them to object of sexual gratification stripping them of their humanity and violating their fundamental rights why i am giving this particular content to you because you can directly quote such a statement in the examination you can directly quote these statement into your, in your essay paper as well okay this particular topic is relevant for your gs paper too that is a uh, social justice part vulnerable section so children are also vulnerable section what is vulnerability what is vulnerability vulnerable section is given in that paper what is vulnerability itna bhi tough nahi hai yaar chances of hazard okay more discrimination they are more likely to face discrimination we can say this they are more likely to face exploitation they are more likely to remain backward yes they are more likely uh, to remain outside of the mainstream society they are more likely to remain outside of the developmental process yes vulnerability can be of many type vulnerability on the basis of age children children are vulnerable elderly people are also vulnerable yes or no so vulnerability with respect to children vulnerability with respect to elder in fact adolescent are also vulnerable one of the viral video of that guy who lost 94 lakh in that cricket betting app chal raha hai abhi kafi yes he is not an adult he was merely an adolescent yes so vulnerability with respect to age okay vulnerability with respect to geography tribal tribal people yes or no vulnerability with respect to geography or people who are living in the hilly terrain yes vulnerability with respect to gender women and sexual minority like lgbt और कौन कौन सी हो सकती है वलनेबिलिटी विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस यस वलनेबिलिटी यू शुड मेक दिस पर्टिकुलर चार्ट अरे इसको बना भी दो है ना वलनेबिलिटी विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस क्या आएगा इसमें दैट इज पुअर पीपल लाइक कल्चरल वेबिलिटी क्या होगा कल्चरल माइनॉरिटी ओके वी कैन से वेबिलिटी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रिलीजन ओके माइनॉरिटीज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रिलीजन माइनॉरिटीज वेबिलिटी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ फिजिकल स्टेटस है ना person with disability or divyang yes divyang jan vulnerability with respect to <coughs> ha huh? yes divyang jan or pwd more more types of vulnerability uh, vulnerability with respect to geography mein likh sakte hai na ye yes that many of the people of odisha like who are living in the coastal area are vulnerable to cyclone yes those people who are living in the north east region or uh, uh, himalayan region they are vulnerable to 
earthquakes, landslides, cloud bursts. Yes or no? We can write that also. More vulnerability. You have to prepare all these sections. Okay. Only one topic is mentioned in your syllabus in social justice. That is vulnerable section. Now you have to cover all these types of vulnerability. At least five, five or six, six points should be remembered with respect to LGBT community, with respect to women, with respect to elderly, with respect to adolescent, etc. Okay. In this lecture, we will complete one vulnerable section that is children. Okay. What are other types of vulnerability? Tribal ho gaya. Like uh, those tribal population who are living in uh, Andaman and Nicobar. Yes, they are on the verge of extinction. So they are also vulnerability with respect to disease. Bol sakte hai kya? Like those people who are suffering with HIV like diseases. Yes, vulnerability with respect to some life threatening or incurable diseases such as people living with HIV and some of the tribal population. In the last lecture, we have discussed sickle cell anemia. Many of the tribal population are inheriting that particular disease. Yes or no? So we can also write that many of the tribal population who are inheriting sickle cell anemia. So these are many types of vulnerability. Question can be asked from any of these topics. Okay. Right now we are discussing children and especially the child sexual abuse. Okay. Okay. So every third crime against children relates to the sexual offense. Delhi topped the list among the union territory 7783 crime against children registered in 2021. Nagaland registered the lower number of crime against the children. The top court overruled the controversial judgment by Madras High Court, which held that in the January that passive consumption, passive consumption means merely the watching of child pornography. Passive consumption of child pornography without direct involvement would not constitute a crime, did not constitute an offense under POXO Act and Information Act. But this particular judgment is overruled by Supreme Court. They are saying that passive consumption is also a criminal act. Okay. Setting aside the high court judgment, restoring the criminal prosecution in this case, the bench expanded the legal interpretation of the POXO Act section 15 to include a stringent measure against the possession, storage and viewing the child pornography. It clarified section 15 of the POXO Act outlines three separate offenses. First offense is incriminates those who fail to delete, destroy and report the child pornography material that they intend to share. Are you getting this particular point? Okay. So if you are aware about any of the content is stored anywhere then it is your duty to report that particular crime. Okay? Okay? So, the first offense is to incriminate those who fail to delete, destroy or report child pornographic material. Second category criminalizes the act of actually sharing, showing and preparing to share child pornography. And third offense focuses on those who store possess such content for the commercial gain like selling, using it for any form of profit. Okay. The ruling asserted that the both POXO and the IT Act should be interpreted in such a way that close any loopholes ensuring that the offender cannot escape on technicalities. Crime against children. Look at the graph. And this is very early. Now it's In 2014, 89,423. Then increasing, increasing, increasing. Okay. Interestingly, most of the sexual exploitation or sexual abuse 
to children are committed by their own family member or their own relative or their own known members okay and according to ncrb the at least 30 to 40 percent of the cases are not reported because of the social taboo okay Be because of the embarrassment that particular child will go through his entire life yes or no because of the some of the social relations because in most of the cases your own relative your own known member is involved in that particular crime okay so under reporting is a big issue NCIB data reveals that concerning the rise of child sexual abuse cases in India in 2021, 1,49,000. So every year it, it is increasing consistently. 1,49,404 cases. Uh, crime against children with a significant portion being sexual offenses. Signif uh, specifically, every third crime against children was registered under POXO. Additionally, NCIB reported 969 cases related to online transmission of child sexual abuse material in 2022. This number has been increasing due to the heightened awareness among the law enforcement agencies and the expansion of digital technology. Approximately 28.9% of the children in India have experienced some form of sexual crime. Means at least 30%. Means at least one third of the total children in India are facing sexual exploitation or some form of sexual abuse. Which is not a good sign. Which is not a good sign for a healthy society. Yes or no? Yes? During the pandemic-induced lockdown, there was a significant surge in the report of abuse and violence against the children. What are the laws? So, first law is Juvenile Justice Care Protection Act 2015. Provides framework for the care, protection, treatment and rehabilitation of children in conflict with the law and those in need of care and protection. Uh, what are the children in conflict? Children in conflict? Very good. Those who are minor, but they committed certain crimes. Those who are under 18 years of age, but they committed certain crimes. Okay? So they are not persecuted or treated under the normal like Bharti Nyay Sahita, they are not punished under that particular law. Rather, they are uh, treated under Juvenile Justice Act. Okay, those children who are under 18 years of age, even they commit, uh, even they commit a murder, or they are involved in a murder or rape, then they are also not sent to the prison. Okay, they will send into the Sudhar Graha. Yes? Okay? So they are treated under Juvenile Justice Care and Protection Act. Okay? One change was made in this particular act uh, after Delhi gang rape case. One change was made in this particular act. What was the change? From 16 to 18 years of age. That was made an exemption exemption why because one of the accused in that particular case was minor he crossed 16 years of age but he was under 18 years of age and he was involved in that heinous crime so one exemption was made in that particular juvenile justice act that those children or those minors who are involved in such heinous crime will be treated according to the indian penal code rather than Juvenile Justice Act. Okay? Uh, in some other classes, we will discuss Juvenile Justice Act as well. Second, Protection of Children from Sexual Offense, POXO Act 2012. Third, Prohibition of Child Marriage Act. Okay? A recent amendment was made earlier, 18 years of age for girls and 21 years for 
बॉय नाउ ट्वेंटी वन ईयर्स फॉर गर्ल्स है ना गर्ल्स के लिए भी कितना हो गया ट्वेंटी वन ईयर्स ऑफ एज Child Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act 1986 and 2006. So these are the legislation. Any question on your social justice topic that is on vulnerable section, you have to mention such laws. Like for children, these are the four laws: Juvenile Justice Act, Pocso, Child Labour Protection Act, and Child Marriage Act. These are the legislation. Apart from legislative framework. There are some constitutional framework as well. One is Article Twenty One. Is for everyone. That is guarantee right to free and compulsory education for children between six to fourteen years of age. Article Twenty Four prohibits the employment of children below the age of fourteen years. Second, third, thirty nine A, thirty nine E and F direct the state to ensure the children are not abused and their childhood and youth are protected against the exploitation and moral and material. abandonment apart from that they have international convention and this particular convention is signed by india and interestingly this one and this one was asked by upsc in 2022 i guess 21 or 22 directly these two questions were asked these two were given and asked that uh, out of which out of which Uh, india has signed so these two conventions were signed by india ilo convention 138 on minimum age and ilo convention 182 on the worst form of child labor direct question tha simple sa ye pucha tha ke kaun sa convention india ne sign kiya hai theek hai so these three conventions signed by india first one is united nation convention on rights of child is a key international agreement dedicated to protection of child right it is signed in 1989 entering into force in 1990s and it is the most widely ratified human right treaty in the history with 196 countries are the signatory ilo convention 138 on minimum age and ilo convention on 182 on worst form of child labor these two conventions are also signed by india okay so some of the legislative framework some is some constitutional provisions and some international relation uh, international conventions or treaties kya kya hai wapas batao related to protection of child right first pocso prevention of child labor juvenile justice act and child marriage act legislative protection or legislative framework constitutional framework article 21a article 24 article 39f and e and f constitutional protection some international convention Un united nation convention on rights of children uncrc second ilo convention 138 on minimum age and ilo convention 182 on worst form of child labor the same thing can be written in your society paper as well सोसाइटी में भी आता है योर आंसर विल बी द सेम ओके नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज सेक्स एजुकेशन इन इंडिया वेदर इट शुड बी गिवन और नॉट बिकॉज इन इंडिया सेक्स एजुकेशन इज नॉट गिवन यस और नो मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल आर अन अवेयर अबाउट दीज पर्टिकुलर एक्टिविटीज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट दे आर मिस इनफॉर्म्ड Sex education is a complex and often controversial topic. Why? Because controversy and cultural views. Sex education sometimes viewed as a taboo subject in India. Opinion on how whether to deliver it is divided across the country. Some states like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, and Chhattisgarh have banned or refused to implement sex education in the school. Okay, this is a big issue. First, second. challenges and misconception resistance to sex education often stems from conservative views and the belief that it does not align with the indian values this opposition can lead to the misinformation first misinformation then second unhealthy sexual behavior among the youth as they may they may turn to unreliable source of information 
दिस इज ए बिग इशू ओके थर्ड थिंग मेनी पेरेंट्स एंड एजुकेटर हाइवर कंजर्वेटिव व्यू सींग डिस्कशन अबाउट सेक्शुअल हेल्थ एज इन इन एप्रोप्रिएट एंड एम्बेसिंग थर्ड एंड फोर्थ प्रेवेजेंट मिसकनसेप्शन दैट सेक्स एजुकेशन एनकरेजेस प्रो मिस्क्यूरिटी अमंग द यूथ these are the four big challenges with respect to sex education in india one is it is considered as the stigma or taboo in india second one is it is considered uh, against the indian culture indian norms okay parents are not ready to provide their children sex education the same thing is true with the educators as well and it is considered that sex education will encourage promiscuity among the youth promiscuity means uh, having num uh, multiple sexual partners okay it is like that thick it cites evidence showing that comprehensive sex education delays the onset of sexual activity first thing and promotes safer practices among those who are sexually active that is why sex education is important the court noted that in this particular judgment where court is saying that uh, pokso should be amended ye isi judgment mein supreme court ne bola hai that uh, the court noted that some indian states sex education programs face resistance due to the belief that they contradict traditional value leading to the bans that leave may many adolescent without accurate information yes and they are the victim of misinformation one good movie was made on this particular subject is that oh my god 2 yes hai na to us usme dikhaya hai that how uh, youths are misguided and they are the victim of misinformation okay according to the bench the lack of proper education often uh, drives teenager and young adult to the internet where they enco encounter unmonitored and unfiltered information which can plant the seed of unhealthy sexual behavior promotion of positive age appropriate sex education as a crucial tool in preventing harmful sexual behavior including the viewing and distributing of sexually explicit material involving minor in fact many of the minors many of the children are unaware that they are facing sexual exploitation sexual abuse in india many of the minors why because they they are not having any type of right information regarding to the sexual activity yes that is why that 30% of the cases are not reported why because of that when they become adult then they realized that we faced sexual exploitation in our childhood okay this is the case many a times they realized in their later stage of life tab usko report kiya hi nahi ja sakta yes or no so this is a big issue that is why sex education is important comprehensive sex education program often offer numerous benefit first one is informed decision making second one is reduce the risk behavior healthy relationship prevent sexual abuse you can go through this repetition here points ka theek hai like uh, reduce the number of sexual partner increase the use of contraception thereby lowering the risk of sexually transmitted infection and unintended pregnancy etc so healthy relationship in sabke liye important hai improved mental health understanding and accepting one's sexuality can contribute to the better mental health comprehensive sexual education addresses topics like body image gender identity sexual orientation and promoting a positive self image and reducing stigma academic success there is evidence that a student who receive comprehensive sex education are more likely to stay in school and achieve the better academic outcome social benefits hain that cac can help reduce gender based violence bullying and discrimination fostering a safer and more inclusive society so overall 
comprehensive sex education equips youth people with the knowledge and skill they need to navigate their sexual development uh, safely and healthy jo bhi likha hua hai niche dekh lena theek hai some of the organization are uh, promoting uh, sex education in india supreme court ka stand we have already discussed current implementation despite the controversy uh there have been effort to introduce sex education in 2018 india's ministry of health and family welfare released a sexual education guideline for school but the point is but a more than a dozen of the state uh have chosen not to implement them like madhya pradesh maharashtra etc okay so this is all about sexual uh sex education is it okay why sex ed education is important you have 5 to 6 point to write apart from that uh, one organization is deeply connected with the children which is known as national commission for protection of child rights this is the statutory organization which is established under commission for protection of child right act 2005 which is established in 2007 what is the mandate to ensure that the all laws policies programs and administrative mechanism conform uh, conform to the vision of child right enshrined in the constitution of india and uncrc uncrc okay U uh, un uh, ncpcr is a statutory body established under commission for protection of child right act 2005 is it okay function kya hai protection and promotion ncpcr is tasked with the protecting and promoting the rights of children in the age group of 0 to 18 monitoring it monitor the proper and effective implementation of laws and policies complaint redressal what are the initiative these initiatives should be written first one is e bal nidan online complaint registration system second bal swaraj focuses on the rescue and rehabilitation of the children in need of care and protection guidelines is issued sis application is there under bal swaraj portal sis application has introduced aid and rehabilitation of children street situation and ghar portal portal have been developed to digitally monitor and track the restoration and repatriation of children okay ncpcr is affiliated with ministry of women and child development and what is the approach it is followed right based approach so basically i am providing you all the information at one place you don't have to search or you don't have to refer any other source okay this source is enough for you you have enough content just go with this particular source mug up all those points okay upsc is all about understanding the concept and mugging those points okay hai na without that mugging up all the points you can not write uh, those five points and five points that we discussed okay you have to write at least 10 points in every question 20 questions yes so overall 200 points or more than 200 points and to write more than 200 points you need many of the factual information that is why i am providing you all the information at one place you got the idea yes ye bal swaraj ka part and ghar portal yes ghar portal is diff different uh bal swaraj portal is different and for that portal one application is there that is sis application okay so this is all about uh your <coughs> where where is that page okay yeah yeah kya so this is all about first news that is child sexual abuse one topic is still remaining if you want then write some of the points on that pokso act as well kyunki wo humne discuss nahi kiya hai likhna hai kya 
लिख दीजिए वो मैंने इसमें दिया नहीं है लिख लो आप पॉक्सो एक्ट पॉक्सो एक्ट दैट इज प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ चिल्ड्रन फ्रॉम सेक्शुअल ऑफेंस एक्ट ओके राइट डाउन फीचर्स ऑफ दिस एक्ट फीचर्स ऑफ द पॉक्सो एक्ट फर्स्ट इट इज अ कॉम्प्रेंसिव लॉ दैट प्रोटेक्ट चिल्ड्रेन अंडर एटीन ईयर अंडर एटीन ईयर्स ऑफ एज चिल्ड्रेन अंडर एटीन ईयर्स एज एटीन ईयर्स एज सेकेंड offenses like offenses like sexual assault sexual exploitation and pornography and pornography it provides gender neutral protection what is gender neutral protection equal protection for both girls and boys okay gender neutral protection next aggravated sexual assault aggravated sexual assault carries rigorous imprisonment carries rigorous imprisonment of at least 10 years rigorous imprisonment of at least 10 years extendable to life imprisonment extendable to life imprisonment what is aggravated sexual offense sexual offense is clear like sexual assault okay child pornography but what is aggravated aggravated means when a person who is known who is relative who is in the authority is committing that particular crime yes then this particular crime is known as aggravated sexual offense if you want to write then write in the bracket aggravated means it is committed by a person in the position of trust and authority it is committed by a person in position of trust or authority like family member like family member public servant etc next special courts special courts to be set up special courts to be set up special court to be set up for the trial of pokso related offenses alag hota hai pokso related alag juvenile courts are something different okay juvenile courts are established under separate act okay special courts to be set up next mandatory reporting mandatory reporting of such crimes mandatory reporting of such crimes mandatory reporting of such crime that should be child friendly that should be child friendly why that should be child friendly because that particular children already gone through gone through the trauma yes and the normal uh, investigative process or criminal justice system will further have is that particular child or not that is why this particular process should be different and that should be child friendly process okay next point rehabilitation and support mechanism rehabilitation and support mechanism such as child welfare committee child welfare committee and special juvenile police special juvenile police next provision of legal aid provision of legal aid and counseling service to the children and their family provision of legal aid and counseling service to the child and their family child and their family and last 
अवेयरनेस अबाउट चाइल्ड सेक्शुअल अब्यूज अवेयरनेस अबाउट चाइल्ड सेक्शुअल अब्यूज एंड ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स एंड ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स दीज आर द फीचर्स ऑफ पोक्सो एक्ट ओके फर्स्ट थिंग इज इट इज अ जेंडर न्यूट्रल लॉ विच प्रोवाइड जेंडर न्यूट्रल प्रोटेक्शन टू बोथ गर्ल चाइल्ड एंड boy child first second it considered is it considers children below the 18 years of age second third point is stringent punishment that is at least 10 years and which can be extended up to life imprisonment fourth special courts to be established fifth child friendly reporting and investigative mechanism etc okay rehabilitation mechanism legal aid and counseling to the child as well as his family okay next shortcoming of this particular act shortcoming of this particular act first and one of the most important issue is poor conviction rate poor conviction rate that is only 14% 14% okay only 14% conviction rate this is the first second inadequate deterrence inadequate deterrence that is according to ncrb according to ncrb in every 15 minutes a child is sexually abused in india so deterrence nahi hai na in every 15 minutes a child is abused sexually in india pokso cases are increasing pokso cases are increasing every year ye humne dekha hai na abhi so inadequate deterrence of this particular act next delay in justice delivery delay in justice delivery and one famous saying is justice delayed is justice denied you can write this also delayed in justice and rehabilitation that is 90% of the pendency wait write down 90% of the pendency wait 90% of the pendency wait and 1.5 year for case disposal 1.5 year for case disposal okay next insufficient protection insufficient protection for children with disability for children with disability next inadequate special courts rehabilitation center rehabilitation center and other support mechanism and other support mechanism other support mechanism etc other support mechanism etc so this is all about your pokso act okay so we have completed one particular topic yes that is sexual abuse of children is it okay yes we have discussed one particular organization that is national commission for protection of child right we have discussed pokso act okay the only thing which is remaining is juvenile justice act okay so we will discuss that in some other classes is it okay so next topic of discussion is cbi last week that particular thing in the news what was the news that karnataka government on thursday decided to withdraw the general consent given to cbi to investigate cases in the state first thing what is cbi second thing what is general consent and why withdrawal of general consent was in the news yes so first thing what is cbi i am not asking about the full form of cbi central bureau of investigation is the central investigative agency in india okay which investigate high profile crimes and the crime related to corruption 
etcetera okay but the point is law and order is the state list subject yes or no law and order is the state list subject police is the state list subject and what cbi is is doing is the work of police or not it is investigating it is persecuting am i right so basically the jurisdiction of ci cbi is nothing but the encroachment of central government in the state domain yes why because law and order and police is the state subject when cbi will enter into any state to investigate any crime then it is nothing but the encroachment of union government into the domain of a state yes yes or no that is why there are two types of consent which is mentioned in the dsp act delhi special uh, special police establishment act okay 1946 two types of consent one is general consent and another one is case specific consent what is general consent usually all the states have been given general consent to the cbi general consent provides cbi to investigate any charges or any case which has happened in any particular state so it will provide cbi power or authority to investigate that particular crime or uh, investigate into that particular matter seamlessly without taking permission from the state government because law and order and police is the state list subject is it okay so it is general consent every time when cbi is entering suppose every time is cbi is entering into the west bengal for the investigation of that particular case cbi does not need to take permission from the state government why because general consent is given but what if general consent is withdrawn now if general consent is withdrawn just like karnataka government withdrew this general consent then every time when cbi or cbi's officials are entering into the state of karnataka then they have to take permission from the state government to investigate any crime to investigate into any matter okay otherwise they will lose the authority of being a police agency you got the idea why because police and law and order is the state subject so if general consent is withdrawn then they have to take case specific consent from the state government is it okay so only two things are important one is general consent another one is case specific consent now first thing is cbi is clear now general consent and case specific consent is clear now third why these states are withdrawing this particular consent general consent because they will provide case specific consent to cbi that is for sure like west bengal already withdrew okay the consent general consent but case specific consent is provided okay to investigate that matter now why states are withdrawing withdrawing is there any specific reason state government means cm or com yes state government means cm theek hai bataiye why states are withdrawing question to samajh mein aaya na sabko yes look karnataka government karnataka is ruled by <coughs> congress opposition party so those states who are withdrawing the general consent are ruled by opposition party because cbi is alleged that cbi is misused by the union government yes to settle political scores yes that is why uh, opposition ruled states are withdrawing the general consent 
दिस इज दी रीजन ओके देखते हैं क्या है द नोटिफिकेशन ग्रांटिंग जनरल कंसेंट फॉर सीबीआई प्रोप क्रिमिनल केसेस इन कर्नाटक स्टेट अंडर डीएसपीई एक्ट दिल्ली स्पेशल पुलिस एस्टेब्लिशमेंट एक्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी सिक्स हैज बिन विड्रॉन लॉ एंड पार्लियामेंट्री अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर एच के पाटिल आफ्टर मीटिंग कैबिनेट चेयर बाय द चीफ मिनिस्टर सिद्धा रमैया अकॉर्डिंग टू सेक्शन सिक्स ऑफ डीएसपीई एक्ट द सेंट्रल ब्यूरो ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन नीड्स कंसेंट फ्रॉम द रिस्पेक्टिव स्टेट गवर्नमेंट टू कंडक्ट इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन देयर jurisdiction why because police and law and order is the state list subject second point cbi is india's premier investigative agency known for its motto of industry impartiality and integrity what is the mission to uphold the constitution of india and the law through the in depth investigation and successful prosecution of offences it also aims to provide leadership and direction to police forces many a times when police failed to investigate or conclude any case then they will took help from cbi okay and act as a nodal agency for the enhancing interstate and international cooperation of law enforcement what are the functions investigating cases notified under section 3 of the dspe act 1940 six second handling matters entrusted by the constitution court lokpal Central Vigilance Commission. So CBI is the main investigating arm of Constitutional Court. Means Supreme Court, High Court can also direct the CBI to investigate any particular matter. And in that case, general consent is not required. You got my point? General consent, case specific consent is clear. this is the third type of investigation is supreme court is directing cbi to enter with respect to any matter which has happened in west bengal so whether they review the general consent or not it doesn't matter cbi will be having authority to investigate that particular case why because it is directed by supreme court or high court is it clear so one is general consent another one is case specific consent third one is direction of the court fourth one is it is the main investigating arm of lokpal which means any case with respect to corruption will be investigated by cbi if lokpal is directing cbi to do so is it okay in that matter general consent case specific consent will not require the same thing is true with the direction of cvc also chief vigilance commission okay so in the five cases cbi can conduct investigation general case specific order of supreme court high court lokpal and cvc theek hai ye important point hai prosecution of cases investigated by cbi preventive vigilance function serving as the national central bureau for interpol okay so interpol ke liye bhi it is the central agency okay apart from that coordination and training coordination training and research recent activity cbi has been involved in various high profile cases including bribery fraud cyber crime etc many of the important cases hai na That Abushi Talwar murder case, CBI is involved. Movie भी बन गई है उसपे. Yes, many high-profile cases where CBI is involved. Recent operation including dismantling a transnational cyber crime network and apprehending public servant involved in the bribery, gruesome rape and murder of the trainee doctor in Kolkata. This case has been assigned to the. two of the cbi's most senior officers including sampath meena who has previously led investigation into other significant cases like 2020 hathra uh, hathras rape murder and 2017 unnao rape case okay so the same officer is investigating kolkata rape and murder case leadership cbi is led by director who is responsible for overseeing its operational and ensuring the agency's mission is fulfilled notable cases cbi has investigated 
ठीक है ये हमने देख ही दिया इंटरनेशनल कॉपरेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड सेंट्रल ब्यूरो ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन इंडिया हैज फेस्ड सेवरल क्रिटिसिज्म फर्स्ट वन इज पॉलिटिकल इंटरफेरेंस ये तो हमें पता ही है यस पॉलिटिकल इंटरफेरेंस दोस who are having their government at the union level or at the central level they are controlling the functioning of cbi why because of its organizational structure prime minister's office under prime minister's office department of personal and training is there and cbi is working under department of personal and training which means cbi is working directly under prime minister's office and who controls prime minister office who is the political head of prime minister office prime minister and who is the administrative head principal secretary principal secretary is the administrative head so basically prime minister and principal secretary is controlling the functioning of cbi via department of personal and training is it okay so because of its organizational structure chances of political interference are there or not only there political interference is going on yes first thing like example cbi versus west bengal government in sharda chit fund scheme that was very much in the news because west bengal government withdrew general consent and when cbi entered into the west bengal for investigation then west bengal police arrested officials of cbi Yes, that was the case. That happened. तो वो तब से बहुत न्यूज़ में था. Then delayed investigation. The CBI has been criticised for delays in complement uh, complementing investigation. This can be due to the various reason, including lack of resources, bureaucratic hurdles, and sometimes intentional delay. Then lack of autonomy. It works under the administrative control of the DOPT, the Ministry of Personal, Public Grievance, Pension, and Conflict of Interest. then 789 post vacant in the executive wing 77 law office and 415 technical officers parliamentary panel had said okay why conflict of interest we are discussing conflict which can lead to the conflict of interest why explain this particular point why conflict of interest because of the involvement of dopt when you will be selected as an ias or ips officer so you have all functioning you have all functions will be controlled by the dopt same department is controlling the cbi don't you think it is a conflict of interest because when you will be involved in any corruption then you are working under the dopt administrative control of dopt will be there whether you are posted in madhya pradesh or uttar pradesh or bihar it doesn't matter but ultimate control will lies with the dopt and you are involved in any corruption case same department is controlling cbi as well you got the idea that is why we are saying that conflict of interest theek okay? hai next accountability issue because there have been instances where cbi has been accused of not being accountable enough this include not being transparent in its approach and decision making judicial criticism that was the question asked by upsc kya bola supreme court ne that you are working as a caged parrot okay then against the principle of federalism because law and order and police is the stateless subject and usurping jurisdiction by making false cases of corruption okay if cbi wants to investigate any particular matter then they will turn any case into the corruption case because it is their jurisdiction okay and hence they start investigating that particular case so that was happened in the example life mission project of kerala being investigated under corruption charge theek hai samajh mein aa gaya because corruption is their jurisdiction they can investigate any case with respect to corruption whether general consent is given or not yes so they entered into kerala in this particular case 
ओके रिफॉर्मिंग सेंट्रल ब्यूरो ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन इंडिया इन्वॉल्व एड्रेसिंग सेवरल की एरिया टू एनहेंस इट्स एफिशियंसी Transparency and independence. First one is statutory status. First thing is CB CBI is not a constitutional body. CBI is not a statutory body. It is established via an executive order only. Okay. So first thing is give this particular body as a constitutional status, not constitutional status, a statutory status. Why statutory status is important? why important yes government who is in the power can dissolve with the cbi any time they wants but when you will provide cbi as a statutory status then its independence will be secured not getting my point one question how to secure independence or autonomy of any organization in general how to secure how to secure look at it this formula can be applied to anything first one is constitutional or legal status second thing is appointment third thing is powers and functions fourth thing is salary and allowances fifth thing is removal process next thing is post retirement appointment ओके फर्स्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट इफ यू सिक्योर दीज फाइव टू सिक्स थिंग्स देन यू कैन सिक्योर इंडिपेंडेंस एंड ऑटोनॉमी ऑफ एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन any organization for example supreme court constitutional status yes or no appointment is secured from interference of executive or not yes it is secured why because not because appointment of judges of supreme court and high court is done by the collegium system yes collegium system is immune from executives interference or political interference is it okay yes so collegium system secured or not powers yes they are deriving their powers from constitution salary and allowances fixed why because usko bolte hain charged expenditure what is charged expenditure लिख भी सकते हैं सब लोग इसको चार्ज एक्सपेंडिचर वट इज चार्ज यस इन पार्लियामेंट द सैलरी ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट द जजेस ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड हाई कोर्ट इज नॉट वोटेड अपॉन वोटिंग इज नॉट डन इट इज फिक्सड ओके लाइक फॉर द बजट वोटिंग इज गोइंग ऑन यस ऑन बट फॉर सम ऑफ द डिग्नेटरीज their salary and allowances is fixed it is charged expenditure because if it is subjected to voting in the parliament then parliament can change their salary and allowances yes or no which means it will not be immune from executives interference yes to secure their autonomy their salary and allowances are fixed they are charged expenditure is it okay secured or not secured removal procedure very difficult till that no judge of supreme court or high court is removed from his position in fact uh, in 
the polity classes, we say is that it is impossible to remove any judge of Supreme Court of High Court from its position. Impossible. Which means it is secured or not. Immune from interference. Post-retirement. Post-retirement appointment. It is going on. Yes. The recent nomination of Chief Justice of India as the member of Rajya Sabha. You know that? Yes. Which means here there is a bad thing. Many of the Chief Justices are appointed as the Governor of the States. Here, Executive is tempering. That is why some of the interference can be done. Those Judges who are in the age of retirement can give their judgment in the favor of the existing government. Yes, in order to get post-retirement appointment. We can assume that or not. Apart from one thing, everything is secured. That is why look at the functioning of Supreme Court and High Court. They are behaving in an independent manner, in an autonomous manner. Is it okay? Now, Supreme Court. Ab ajao, ab to CBI pe yao, ab sida. You can also make this particular chart for each organization. For CBI, constitutional status, legal status, no. Appointment directly by the executive, no. Powers and functions, they are, yes, from DSPE Act 1946. It is okay. Salary, ye fixed nahi hai. A removal any time post retirement everything is tampered except one thing that is why CBI is behaving like a caged parrot is it okay you got the idea so you can make this particular chart to find out which organization is uh, immune from political interference Yes? Is it okay? Hai na? Toh ye baaki organizations ke liye bana dena. Abhi time nahi hai. Nei toh mein bana deta. Thik hai? So statutory status to the CBI should be given. First. Second. Autonomy and independence. Strengthen the CBI's autonomy. Now you know that chart. How to strengthen autonomy and independence. Aap samaj sakte hai. State's consent. Harmonize the relationship between CBI and state police by addressing issues related to state consent. This might require a constitutional amendment to include federal offense. This is important. Okay. Some of the central offense, some of the state offense, one constitutional amendment is needed to include this particular term federal offense so that CBI can investigate that particular matter seamlessly yes or no so federal offense need to be included then human resource training improve the recruitment process fill those vacancies that we discussed cbi officer to enhance their skills professionalism this include adopting the uh, adopting the best practices in investigation technique and forensic science transparency accountability technological upgradation internal reform focus on internal reform such as the refresh of the cbi board creation of new committee to focus on human resource etc these are the point you should remember okay this is important first is the second arc so you should in polity question you should recommend or you should write the recommendation of such commission like second arc first arc Sarkariya Commission, Panchi Commission, NCRWC. Okay. For each topic, for each body, there are certain recommendations which is given by such commission. So with respect to the CBI, recommendation of second ARC. ARC means Administrative Reform Commission. Second ARC. Okay. So first thing they are saying that statutory status should be given to CBI. Second, investigation and Corruption function to be separated. Second thing, third thing, 
फॉर्मेशन ऑफ नेशनल क्राइम ब्यूरो फॉर अदर क्राइम वाइल सी बी आई शुड ओनली डील विद दी करप्शन ऑफेंस फोर्थ थिंग ये तो एक हो गया रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ सेकेंड ए आर सी द सेकेंड थिंग इज सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट विनीत नारायण केस सुप्रीम कोर्ट गेव डिटेल्ड गाइडलाइन टू एंश्योर ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड अकाउंटेबिलिटी इन दी सी बी आई सो वन केस इज फेमस फॉर सी बी आई एंड सी वी सी दैट इज विनीत नारायण केस ओके सी बी आई के लिए सिर्फ गाइडलाइन है तो वो मैंने बत, वो सारी गाइडलाइन इसी टाइप की है वट एवर इज रिकमेंडेड बाय सेकेंड ए आर सी That is why I have not given those guidelines. Then LP Singh Committee statutory status to the CBI to ensure independence and former CJI suggested that an umbrella independent investigating agency to be established. Okay, so this is all about your CBI, the Karnataka government. We have already discussed that. I guess. No, ye or bhi kuch hai that uh, Karnataka government becoming the eighth state. to do so which who withdraw the general consent other states like punjab why punjab because it is ruled by jharkhand different than the union government then kerala different than the union government west bengal telangana meghalaya tamil nadu yes or no all those states who are ruled by other party then the central government withdraw the the general consent okay rajasthan andhra pradesh mizoram chatisgarh two had earlier withdrawn the consent uh, chatisgarh when chatisgarh was ruled by bhupesh baghel that is indian national congress they also withdrew the general consent a majority of these state withdrawal has happened after the narendra modi government came to power at the center in 2018 in the wake of such withdrawal the supreme court remarked was not a desirable position this should not be done but they are doing it why because of the misuse of cbi okay withdrawal of general consent is not unique to the present time pehle bhi hua hai usi ke bare mein bataya hua hai general consent case specific consent and no consent we have discussed it what is general consent normally given to the state to help the cbi to seem this investigation what is case specific consent where cbi has to take permission for aov case and what is no consent that is central gov government employee courts order court red handed and order of cvc order of lokpal etc no consent is required theek hai unlike national investigation agency Anuj, mute your mic. अबे बस यार कल लो इसको बंद. Okay, so unlike National Investigating Agency, which is governed by NIA Act 2008, has jurisdiction across India. Why? But CBI is not having jurisdiction across India. Why NIA is having jurisdiction across India and CBI is not having? In some other classes, we will discuss NIA also. Yes, NIA deals with terrorism, anti-India activity. Okay, that is why NIA is having nationwide jurisdiction. Okay, this is important point to note that conviction rate of CBI rises up to seventy-four percent. despite of having this much of criticism cbi is one of the top most investigating agency of the world which is having conviction rate greater than fbi of united states mujhe bhi yakeen nahi hua tha but this is true okay despite of all criticism cbi is one of the most important and one of the most successful investigative agency of the world which is having conviction rate of 75% is it okay to aisa nahi hai aapko criticism mein dikhna hai there are certain positive points as well okay ye abhi ke report hai zyada time nahi hua hai isko then the third news item of the day that is uh 
is there any question how to get legal and constitutional status in india how to get particularly cbi take permission from which ministry which type of question is this according to you the minister of home of any particular state and second question that how to get legal and constitutional status in india how to get via parliamentary law yes or no parliament can bring a separate legislation which can provide legal status statutory status to cbi just like commission for protection of child right which established national commission for protection of child right so this particular legislation is giving statutory status statutory statutory framework to ncpcr yes just like that is it okay now voice is clear or not so this is the third point which is related to your gs paper 1 and gs paper 3 India joins US led mineral security network to secure critical mineral friend of chinese challenge what is critical mineral which is having a strategic importance like yes those are known as critical mineral and how they are di different from away earth mineral okay so all those differences will be discussed in this particular class okay once and for all these two concept will be cleared okay so first thing is critical mineral first thing is that india joint mineral security network okay to secure critical minerals to friend of chinese challenge why chinese challenge yes what kitna amount hai batata hu abhi theek hai dekhte jaiye Mineral Security Finance Network is the initiative that stems from the Mineral Security Partnership, which was established by United States in 2022. So basically, Mineral Security Partnership is the U.S.-led initiative, which is U.S.-led initiative means Australia, Japan, India, European countries, Canada. These countries will be the member member of Mineral Security Partnership. okay mineral security finance network aims to strengthen cooperation among the member country to secure supply chain for critical minerals which are essential for the clean energy transition not only clean energy transition other technologies as well like we are having some space mission so many of the critical minerals are important to make the parts of space craft okay many of the critical minerals are essential to get success in our digital india mission because silicon silicon is the heart of digital revolution yes or no so silicon is the critical mineral so minerals which are important for future technologies are considered as the critical mineral okay key objective promote cooperation and information exchange msfn brings together development finance institution and export credit agency ye to pad lena aap sab okay it is all about mineral security partnership and mineral security finance network basically mineral security finance network is the part of mineral security partnership and mineral security partnership is the us led initiative to secure the supply chain for the critical mineral is it okay second point ensuring sustainability project project supported by the msfn are expected to adhere to the high environmental social governance and labor standard to ensure sustainable development and positive impact on the local communities why we are making this statement we will discuss after 3 to 4 slides here we are saying that adhere to high environmental social governance high environmental because mining of these critical mineral will pollute the environment will threaten biodiversity yes and that is why this particular mineral security partnership is saying that we will adhere to high environmental social governance is it okay 
second they are saying that labor standard to ensure sustainable development high standard of labor why because in china or when china is mining these particular mineral in the congo a documentary hai, blood batteries naam suna hai blood batteries search kar lena kar lo abhi search ghar ja kar ke dekhna iske bare mein articles padhna blood batteries so china is controlling the cobalt mining in the democratic republic of congo where children are involved in the mining in the wet hole mining wet hole mining is clear to you wet hole mining so children are involved in this particular wet hole mining mining of cobalt cobalt is also one of the critical mineral which is essential part of our lithium ion batteries cobalt okay so that is why united states is saying that we will adhere to the <coughs> high labor standard so basically uh, mineral security partnership is against the chinese monopoly of critical minerals that is why they are making such a statement high environmental and high labor standards because china is violating labor laws okay participating countries and organization such as for united states australia canada european union india all the friendly nation with the united states next recent development msfn was officially announced on september 23 2024 abhi hua hai isi week united nation general assembly in new york india joined the msfn to secure the critical mineral and reduce the dependence on the countries like china for rare earth mineral okay kya hai dekh lete hain critical minerals are essential for essential non fuel mineral non fuel mineral like mineral other than petroleum natural gas etc non fuel mineral that are crucial for high tech applications national defense green energy industry they are termed as critical because they have high risk of supply chain disruption and are vital for the economy and national security these are the critical mineral list beryllium magnesium germanium lithium tungsten zirconium aluminium cobalt tin etc okay these are critical minerals lithium example hai kuch kuch that is lithium used in the battery for ev cobalt essential for battery production which is controlled by maine abhi kaha that china is controlling the entire supply chain of cobalt okay then rare earth element such as uh, neodymium and dysporium used in magnet for the wind turbine and electric vehicle graphite used in the batteries and fuel cell nickel is an important part of stainless steel production and battery so rare earth element or rare earth minerals are also critical mineral so you can say that critical minerals are or critical mineral is an umbrella term under which rare earth mineral comes is it okay these minerals are integral to the production of clean energy technology electronics various defense system ensuring stable supply of these minerals is crucial for technological advancement and energy security is it okay दो चार का नाम याद हो जाएगा सफिशियंट है लिथियम कोबाल्ट ग्रेफाइट टिन बेरेलियम एटसेट्रा ओके एंड इट्स यूजेस आल्सो सप्लाई चेन फॉर चाइना वार्निंग शॉट्स विद द मिनरल दैट रन द वर्ल्ड ठीक है अब चाइना ही चाइना आएगा supply chain for the critical mineral faces several significant risk which can impact the industries reliant on the first geopolitical tension many critical minerals <coughs> are sourced from the region with political instability example democratic republic of congo political instability hai wahan par cobalt entire supply chain is concentrated in the democratic republic of congo okay so geopolitical tension this can lead to the supply chain disruption due to the conflict trade restriction and changes in the government policies second geo geological scarcity some of the critical minerals are rare and only found in some specific 
geological settings. This scarcity can make the supply chain vulnerable to the disruption if few deposits are not discovered or existing ones are depleted. This is the second concern. Third, monopolies and market concentration. The production and processing of many critical minerals are concentrated in few countries. For example, <clears throat> China. So China can disrupt the entire supply chain of critical mineral and thereby impacting energy transition, thereby impacting technological advancement of many countries, including India as well. Including India as well. And that is why we joined Mineral Security Partnership to reduce the dependence from China. Is it okay? Third, environment social governance issue. Mining and possessing processing uh, operation can have significant environmental and social impact. Concerns about water usage, greenhouse gases emission, biodiversity loss. We have already discussed that point. Supply chain complexity and transparency. The supply chain for the critical minerals are often complex, opaque, making it difficult to trace the origin of the material and ensure responsible sourcing. Next, technological and market changes. Rapid advancement in the technology and shift in the market demand can affect the supply chain and demand dynamic. Okay, so addressing the, these risks is important. And that is why Mineral Security Partnership is the alternative. And India joined Mineral Security Partnership. Is it okay? These points should be written. Opinium China is weaponizing mineral monopoly. Such articles are very much in the news. China has significant hold on the global supply of the <coughs> critical mineral. Kya hai dekhiye? Production and processing. Leading producer of 29 critical mineral, including rare earth element, which are vital for manufacturing and advanced technology. It controls Ketana? how much 60% of rare earth mining operation and 85% of global processing capacity. So not only India, United States is also dependent upon China for critical minerals, for rare earth minerals. And they faced a crisis during COVID-19. Okay? That's why the idea of Mineral Security Partnership came. All the like-minded countries like Australia, Japan, India... United States, Canada, European Union came together to form Mineral Security Partnership. So this is the potential question for GS Paper 1 with respect to those minerals okay, and industries and with respect to your GS Paper 3 as well. Okay? Or uh, China is involved in this particular thing. So Paper 2 is also important. Okay, <clears throat> It controls... 60% of rare earth mining, 85% of the global processing capacity. It produces 98% of the raw gallium. Means gallium is 100% controlled by China. Okay. This controls allow China to influence the global supply chain significantly. Yes, because they are controlling it. Posing uh, potential national security and economic risk for countries like United States and its ally. Okay. Recent export restriction have highlighted the need for other nations to diversify their source of critical mineral. Strategic leverage China control over this mineral allow the exert uh, considerable influence on the global supply chain. For instance, it has previously restricted export to gain a strategic advance, uh, advantage over other countries, economic policies, decades of industrial policy have enabled China to build near monopoly on certain minerals like gallium used in high performance microchips. And microchips are heart of all these technologies that we are using right now. <clears throat> Which means without China, you guys okay, will not be able to Okay, uh, watching, watch this particular video. Yes or no? So thanks to China. <laughs>
ओके okay. अब क्या है यहां पे चाइना है सिग्निफिकेंटली इंक्रीज्ड इट्स अ कंट्रोल ओवर ग्लोबल कोबाल्ट सप्लाई चेन एज वेल लाइक दिस दिस फोटो इज टेकन फ्रॉम द वेबसाइट ओके माइनिंग एंड प्रोडक्शन दे कंट्रोल 85 परसेंट ऑफ कोबाल्ट प्रोडक्शन एज वेल ओके एंड कोबाल्ट इज इसेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ दैट यू हैव लिथियम आयन बैटरी ओके सो अवर ग्रीन मोबिलिटी मिशन यस ग्रीन मोबिलिटी मिशन दैट वी आर टारगेटिंग दैट 30 परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल व्हीकल इन इंडिया बाय 2030 थाउजेंड एंड थर्टी विल बी हैविंग ईवी और फ्रॉम रनिंग फ्रॉम अवेन्यूएबल एनर्जी सोर्सेस विच मीन्स टू हैव दैट ट्रांजिशन वी डिपेंड्स अपॉन चाइना Yes, because they are controlling ninety-eight percent of, uh, sorry, eighty-five percent of cobalt. To success, or uh, to have success in our digital India mission, we are dependent upon China because they are controlling. Kesiam. Yes or no? That is why China se dushmani achhi nahi hai. Dosti to hai hi nahi. Dushmani bhi achhi nahi hai. ठीक है? Cobalt supply. This includes agreement with the major producers Glencore, which supply a substantial portion of its cobalt output to the Chinese firm. A refining capacity. China dominates the refining of cobalt with the seventy-seven percent of the share. Strategic investment. उसने किया हुआ है कहाँ पर? Which holds over fifty percent of the world cobalt reserve. Okay. और वहां पे चाइना का इन्वेस्टमेंट है सो यू कैन इमेजिन मार्केट इन्फ्लुएंस चाइना कंट्रोल्स ओवर कोबाल्ट प्रोडक्शन एंड रिफाइनिंग गिव्स इट सब्सटेंशियल इन्फ्लुएंस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड दैट सो गेलियम कोबाल्ट ये आर्टिकल है आप इसको सर्च करके पढ़ सकते हैं हंट फॉर द ब्लड डायमंड ऑफ द बैटरीज इम्पीड्स द ग्रीन एनर्जी पुश वाई बिकॉज ऑन द वन हैंड वी आर सेंग एथिकल इशू This question can be asked in the ethics. On the one hand, we are saying that we will save environment. Yes, by adopting EVs. Yes, EVs. So via EVs, we will protect the environment. But your EVs are coming at the cost of human right violation, which is going on in Democratic Republic of Congo. Yes or no? ethical dilemma or not this is the ethical dilemma that on the one hand world is moving towards the green energy green mobility energy transition on the other hand the entire supply chain is controlled by china and china is not caring about human right violation aap jante hi ho china ko yes they do not care about human right violation they do not care about labor standards they do not care about environmental protection so on the one hand when you are driving your electronic vehicle car ev car on the other hand some of the children in the democratic republic of congo are suffering yes this is the ethical dilemma this can be written in your uh, ethics paper okay just go with that article i will share one more article of the financial express aap usko bhi search kar loge mil jayega isme maine last mein attach kiya hua hai india has identified now position of india india has identified 30 critical minerals by ministry of mines essential for economic growth technological advancement kya kya hai antimony beryllium bismuth cobalt cobalt gallium germanium etc some of the rare earth minerals as well so overall 30 critical minerals are identified by What are their uses? Lithium, rechargeable battery, ceramic, cobalt, rechargeable battery, nickel, stainless steel, super alloy, rechargeable battery, vanadium, etc. At least three or four. I have to remember to write it. It will be done. Okay. To secure a stable supply of these materials, India has joined international initiatives like Mineral Security Partnership, India-Australia Critical Mineral. Investment Partnership, Union Budget, recent Union Budget recognizes energy security as the key priority, proposing 
targeted custom duty exemption for critical mineral including lithium so those who have importing lithium will be exempted from custom duties okay so these are the initiative by india india's import dependency these these are the challenges first one is import dependency at least 80 to 90 percent dependency in india ki Kita? and most of the minerals critical minerals and rare earth minerals we are importing from china okay china's dominance we have already discussed domestic exploration and production is yet to be materialized like last year that particular thing was in the news that lithium yes lithium reserves were discovered in the YC district of jammu and kashmir but the point is technological advancement is not there second thing is the fragile topography and geology of that particular region so lithium mining will cre create disturbance in that particular geology and ecology india's limited capacity in processing and refining critical mineral present a significant challenge moreover complex geology lack of advanced uh, exploration technology regulatory hurdles are extra then excessive dependence on impor, uh, import import Im exposed india to price volatility which impacts domestic industry and competitiveness of indian product because of the price volatility competitiveness of indian product will be hampered yes or no <clears throat> just like uh, dependency of india over, over petroleum and natural gas 85 percent dependency so anything which is going on in the west asia will be having impact over india's energy security or not that is why we are reducing our dependency from the west asia and, and we started purchasing oil from russia and within two years russia became the largest supplier of oil to india yes within two years in fact import from russia is higher than the cumulative import of all the west asian countries and we are exploring the option of importing oil from venezuela as well yes why because we are reducing de dependency from that particular region you got the idea the same thing is true with respect to critical minerals as well that will impact indian industry and product uh, uh, competitiveness of indian product environmental concern hai that an average silicon chip kitna pani deti hai 10 million gallons so environmental concern is another important aspect just go with this particular diagram economic importance supply critical mineral we have already discussed that okay so top producer globally of 18 critical minerals who is the top producer these countries are producing single single mineral like brazil is naubium south africa platinum democratic republic of congo cobalt and titanium but the point is china is controlling that also okay australia lithium but china you got the idea russia is producing palladium critical minerals telecommunication energy defense aerospace transportation okay a push for critical mineral that was the article just go with that article okay a push for critical mineral financial express ka article hai ek baar padh lena isko financial express ka article hai ye sara data wahi se liya hai maine critical uses kya hai critical mineral clean energy electric mobility solar pv technology digital india 5g semiconductor production Securing critical mineral can save India from weaponization of supply chain and aware of the mineral and other critical minerals are essential for manufacturing of high performance magnet, specialized alloy, advanced electronics used and satellite spacecraft, etc. We have already discussed that. The last topic that is aware of the mineral. 
as we have said that critical mineral is an umbrella term and rare earth mineral are the part of critical mineral so what is rare earth mineral or rare earth elements chemistry yaad hai sabko 10th class ka okay so scandium yttrium and 15 lanthanides are known as rare earth element this is the definition of rare earth element that 2 plus 15 overall 17 rare earth elements are there ye 10th class mein tha okay that is the scandium yttrium and 15 lanthanides this particular group is known as lanthanides they are known as rare earth elements or rare earth mineral are the group of mineral they contain one or more rare earth element as major constituent these elements are typically found in association with alkaline and para alkaline igneous complexes 17 a total inke naam hai lanthanum cerium neodymium europium gadolinium thulium europium okay holmium no need to remember just remember scandium yttrium and 15 lanthanides that's it that can be asked in the prelims as well despite their name these elements are relatively abundant but still they are known as rare earth rare means rarely found but they are abundant in the earth crust but the point is they are rarely found in the concentrated form and that is why economically viable to mine that is they are uneconomical in terms of their mining that is why they are known as rare earth mineral these minerals are crucial for very high end technology including electronics renewable energy technology defense system etc like neodymium is used for powerful magnet found in the wind turbine europium is used for phosphors of led lights and screens so you are surrounded by those technologies okay and all those technologies which you are surrounded by in all those technologies rare earth minerals or critical minerals are used be it this particular device or be it this particular device or your mobile phone anything led screen led lights etc sab mein kya use ho raha hai rare earth mineral critical minerals is it okay again with respect to rare earth mineral magnets electronics glass optics medical imaging green technology defense ek baar pad lenge same hi cheez repeat hai again point kya hai yahan par bhi that china is controlling the entire supply chain look at the condition ओके क्यूमुलेटिव कैपेसिटी से भी ज्यादा है सबकी ठीक है ये 62 परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल प्रोडक्शन इन 2018 चाइना डोमिनेंस इन वे ऑफ प्रोडक्शन इज सिग्निफिकेंटली सिग्निफिकेंट एंड मल्टीफेसेटेड प्रोडक्शन एंड प्रोसेसिंग चाइना अकाउंट्स फॉर 70 परसेंट ऑफ ग्लोबल वे अर्थ ओवर एक्सट्रेक्शन एंड नाइनटी ऑफ द वे अर्थ प्रोसेसिंग Is it clear? Again, critical minerals are here. Here, it's almost the same. Okay, Mamla. The dominance is due to the decades of state investment, export control, cheap labor, low environmental standard. Everything is good with respect to China. Strategic importance. We have critical for various application. Everything. Recent development. In 2021, China merged three dominant state-owned enterprises into. China Rare Earth Group further consolidating its control over the market. Global response क्या है? Industrialized countries are developing strategies to reduce reliance on Chinese rare earth minerals. These includes opening of new mines, promoting recycling, and fostering international collaboration. However, these efforts are unlikely to significantly diminish the dominance of China before 2030. okay so for next 5 to 6 years there will be china's dominance there is no alternative okay next thing is 
China's position in the way of the market underscores the geopolitical and economic complexity of global supply chain. India holds a significant position in the global way of the mineral landscape with the 6% of the world's way of earth reserve. However, the production is relatively low and contributing is less than 2% of the global output. How much is China? Ka? Global production? 62%. How much is You can imagine the situation. Okay. India's way of the mineral includes lanthanum, cerium, press, uh, pressio, dimium, etc. In a recent year, India has made destroyed, etc. Okay. So one is monazite sand. Both suna hoga iske baave mein geography ki class mein. Okay. Indian coast pe milti hai monazite sand. Aur kahan kahan pe ye milta hai? Dekh lo. Okay. So this is all about the way of earth mineral as well. So critical mineral, the way of earth mineral. Is it okay? So three topic, child sexual abuse. In that, we have also discussed sex education. The entire judgment of Supreme Court, NCPCR, and POXO Act. We have completed that particular topic for it always. Second topic was CBI. We have completed CBI as well. And third thing is critical mineral. So critical mineral and rare earth element. Is it clear to you? Critical mineral is a generic term basically. Those minerals which are considered as important for future technological advancement but they are more likely to be uh, controlled by some of the countries and their supply chain is more likely to be disrupted. They are known as critical minerals because uh, aluminium is also a critical mineral according to government of India. Tin is also critical mineral. Yes, so it is a generic term. Second thing is rare earth mineral. What is rare earth mineral? Ye is specific. Hai. Yttrium, scandium, and 15 lanthanides. They are a way of earth mineral. Is it clear to you? No doubt in this. Write down three to four points. Then you will go. <coughs> Some of the point, which I have mentioned, related to way of earth mineral. I will take only five minutes. Okay? Because this topic is complete. Way of earth mineral. India, India has fifth largest reserve of rare earth mineral. India has fifth largest reserve of rare earth mineral. Rare earth mineral. Which is twice of the Australia. Which is the twice of the Australia. But it imports but it imports more, most of its need from China. But it imports most of its need from China. Most of its need from China. Next point. US also import 80% of rare earth mineral from China. Kitna? 80% US could be and European Union 98% European Union is importing 98% okay solution in India extraction in India extraction of rare earth mineral is done by IREL Indian Rare Earth Limited IREL IREL which is a public sector enterprise under under Department of Atomic Energy which is public sector enterprise under Department of Atomic Energy IREL is having monopoly over rare earth mineral. 
आई आर ई एल इज हैविंग मोनोपोली ओवर मोनोपोली ओवर रेयर अर्थ मिनरल सेकेंड थिंग आई आर ई एल इज प्रोड्यूसिंग रेयर अर्थ ऑक्साइड्स आर ई ओ रेयर अर्थ ऑक्साइड्स यूजली आपने पढ़ा होगा जोग्राफी में भी दैट ऑल द मिनरल्स आर एक्सट्रेक्टेड इन दी फॉर्म्स इन दी फॉर्म ऑफ देयर ऑक्साइड्स ओनली ओके एंड आफ्टर दैट वी आर रिफाइनिंग ऑल दोज ऑक्साइड्स सो वेयर अर्थ ऑक्साइड्स आर रिफाइंड इन दी फॉर्म ऑफ वेयर अर्थ मिनरल और वेयर अर्थ एलिमेंट ओके सो आई आर ई एल इज प्रोवाइडिंग प्रोड्यूसिंग वेयर अर्थ ऑक्साइड्स एंड selling it and selling it to the foreign firm and selling it to the foreign firm like firm of china okay selling to the foreign firm which extract which extract the metal and manufacture end product which extract the metal from it and manufacture end product and manufacture end product and manufacture end product rukiye abhi ruk jao yaar thoda sa manufacture end product so basically i r e l is producing a rare earth oxide and it is selling to the foreign firm who is producing rare earth mineral or rare earth element according to you which is more profitable this thing or this thing this thing is more profitable yes or no likh lijiye hence we are confining ourselves with the low cost low reward upstream process this is the low cost low cost low reward upstream process upstream process and this is high cost high reward downstream process so we can say that we have the part of supply chain but we have confining ourselves with the upstream process only which is which is having low cost low reward okay but china is having the presence of presence in the upstream as well because they are having a reserve they are mining those uh, mining from those reserve and they are also producing end product as well so they are controlling the downstream as well so basically they are controlling the entire supply chain of rare earth mineral okay why we are confining ourselves with the uh, low cost low reward upstream process because of the lack of technological advancement okay this is the reason so we are mining those mineral mining those oxides but the point is we are not refining theek hai to jo hum bechne ja jate hain wo sasta hi milta hai aur uski wajah se low reward you got the idea second thing is second issue is the monopolization of the supply chain by irel this is another issue third point dekhiye by offering by offering viability gap funding by offering viability gap funding to companies to companies india can also india can also enter into the downstream india can also enters into the downstream which is 
हाई कॉस्ट हाई वेवर्ड विच इज हाई कॉस्ट हाई वेवर्ड तो वट वी कैन डू वायबिलिटी गैप फंडिंग टू दी प्राइवेट कंपनीज सेकेंड थिंग डिक्रीज द मोनोपोलाइजेशन और डिक्रीज द मोनोपोली ऑफ आई आर ई एल राइट डाउन नेक्स्ट पॉइंट डिक्रीज द मोनोपोली ऑफ आई आर ई एल डिक्रीज द मोनोपोली ऑफ आई आर ई एल डिक्रीज द मोनोपोली ऑफ आई आर ई एल एग्जाम्पल लिखिए इसका अ न्यू डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ वे एव अर्थ अ न्यू डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ वे एव अर्थ इज एस्टेब्लिश अंडर न्यू डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ वे एव अर्थ इज एस्टेब्लिश अंडर मिनिस्टर ऑफ पेट्रोलियम एंड नेचुरल गैस मिनिस्टर ऑफ पेट्रोलियम एंड नेचुरल गैस third point now the point is we are not having enough reserve we are having only 5% reserve so more technological advancement will not provide us the solution that is why the third point that mineral security partnership we have already joined write down next thing india already joined mineral security partnership class hai kya बस ये लास्ट पॉइंट है लास्ट पॉइंट है मिनरल सिक्योरिटी पार्टनरशिप ओके इंडिया ऑलरेडी ज्वाइन मिनरल सिक्योरिटी पार्टनरशिप फोर्थ पॉइंट कोऑर्डिनेशन विद अदर एजेंसीज कोऑर्डिनेशन विद अदर एजेंसीज लाइक क्वाड कोऑर्डिनेशन विद अदर एजेंसीज लाइक क्वाड टू बिल्ड अप स्ट्रेटेजिक रिजर्व टू बिल्ड अप स्ट्रेटेजिक reserve like we are having a strategic petroleum reserve in india in the same manner we can also have strategic reserve for critical mineral or rare earth mineral okay which can provide us the buffer against any disruption in the supply chain okay so these are the solution that's it thank you so much question aaj ऐसा कोई क्वेश्चन मैं बना ही नहीं पा रहा हूं ठीक है आप तो ये टॉपिक पढ़ लो आ, आ जाए तो लिख देना ये प्रिलिम्स में भी काम का है मेंस में भी काम का है ठीक है थैंक यू